On this episode of Bloomify Classic, I'll show you how to check and set the timing on the Jaguar XJ6. Welcome back to Love With A Classic and if you're new to my channel, I hope you stick around and consider subscribing. I put new videos every week on some Jaguar and Classic car related content. And in today's video, we're going to start tuning this XJ6. In the previous video, we finally got started and thank you so much for all those nice comments. And thank you so much for everyone who's followed along on this journey of this rebuild showing what can be done at home with some simple tools and not really a big budget and still end up with a great car that you can drive. So before we can drive it, it has to be tuned. Before we tune the carbs, however, you always start with ignition. That's what I'm doing today. I have already set up the distributor statically when I put it back in before I uh, button up the engine basically, just to make sure it would fire up. So I think if it's not completely spot on, at least the ignition is set up pretty close. But I'll show you today how to uh, check it with a normal timing light. This is a pretty simple one I have, uh, however you can set the grease on the back, but you don't need one of these, I'll show you that you actually don't need one that has to set the grease like this, you can just have one that's on the zero, that's no problem at all, because there are timing marks on the dampener of this engine. So now we'll head on over to the engine, I'll check the timing and if it's uh, correct, that's great, but I will also show you then how to adjust it if you need to. And if it's incorrect, then we'll, we're going to adjust it on this one. So let's hand over to the engine, fire it up, and check the timing. I've already run the engine up to operating temperature. So you can probably see I have the choke disconnect at the moment. I had some issues with it during my first startup, but I'm going to have a look at that next. I've also disconnected the vacuum to the distributor. And I've hooked up my timing light. So I hooked it up over here, and then I hooked up the sensing part to number 6 cylinder. So on the XK engine, number 6 cylinder is at the front. And that's where you time it. Then you have the timing marks down over here. They're pretty easy to get to. I will film those in a minute. And on this engine, the timing should be 8 degrees before top dead center. Uh, this is a Series 3 engine though. That has Series 2 inlet manifolds and cars put on it. So it does have the Series 3 uh, distributor, which is a great distributor because it's an electronic ignition. However, it's a little different to set up because if you have the uh, original Series 2 distributor with points and condenser, on the other side of the vacuum advance over here, you have a little knob called the veneer that you can turn back and forth and that will let you make small adjustments, easy small adjustments to the uh, ignition timing instead of messing with the pinch bolt here on the back. Uh, I set this thing up roughly with the pinch bolt on the back statically, so it should be pretty close. But let's fire up the engine and see what the timing is, how close we are, and if it has to be adjusted. Hopefully it's gonna fire right up. Give it a little rev. This is about 800 RPM, that's pretty close enough to 750. Grab my timing light here and I'm gonna set it to zero to start with. And shine it down there. Hopefully you can see the timing bar there on the camera. It looks like it's at five mark about, so I'm gonna turn the dial. And if I look at my timing light, uh, that is set perfectly at 8 degrees. So that's really good. So I hope you guys can see on camera as I turn it. Back and forth. So I have to set a zero there. If I keep on my timing light, it goes down to zero there. The good thing about this engine is that if you don't have a timing light like this one where you can set it, if you just have one that's always at zero, have timing marks down there, so you see, it's set right at 8. So the timing is set perfectly. So I'm going to shut off the engine now and I'll show you what you would have to do if you need to adjust your timing. I grabbed a manual here so you can more easily see 
what that little screw looks like. So if you have the earlier distributor, you have that screw there, you can finally set the timing. But if you're like me, if you have a Series 3 engine, you can't do that. Then there is just on the back here of the distributor down there, there's a little bolt and you can loosen that, you can turn the distributor back and forth. This, the uh, rotor turns anti-clockwise, so if you want to advance the timing, you turn the distributor clockwise. If you want to retard the timing, you turn it anti-clockwise. So you can do that with the engine running if you want, or with it off. So let's say that this was off a few degrees, I could loosen that, advance it just a tiny bit, tighten up, start up the engine, and check everything again. You can easily do that if you're not comfortable putting your hand down here with all the belts and things rotating. It can also be done with uh, a helper. So you could have a helper that looks down there at the timing light and then you could turn it over here and then they can let you know when it's perfect and you can tighten it down. In case it was difficult to see the timing marks and what the timing pointer looked like when I had the strobe going, I'm not really sure how well it shows up on camera. I grab a flashlight so I can show what it looks like. So that thing I'm shining on right there, that is the timing pointer. And then you can see some t white text coming up here. Those are the timing marks. So all the way up the top there is zero, and then it goes down there in, in the grease. So that's what you're aiming at with the timing light when you set the timing. It's right next to the alternator here on this car. If you have one with AC, you have the AC compressor right there. So there's the pointer. So you're looking at the flat bit top of that pointer to be on the right marks over there. So at 8 degrees before top dead center on this engine. Just one last thing I want to clarify. I set the timing at 8 degrees before top dead center. That's because on a European Series 2, that is correct. Running these carburetors and this type of intake, that is the correct ignition setup. However, this is a Series 3 block and head like I mentioned before, but I've set up everything as if it were a Series 2, so I think that this will be the correct timing for the car, at least at the moment, it seems to be running well on it. I will tune up the carburetors and then after taking it for a drive, if it doesn't feel completely right, I will try changing the timing a little bit, but I think it's going to be correct. But what I really want to try to get at is that it might not be correct for your car. You might have a lot of emissions on there, it might be a North American car with a smog pump and such. So check what the ignition timing should be on your car. It's the same way of checking it here as I've shown, but the number might be different. So uh, usually there is a sticker, usually on the underside of the hood or somewhere else in the car. There should be an emission sticker and it should say what the timing should be. Otherwise, check your manual or check online knowing which um, emissions you have and which timing you should have. But I just want to clarify that so you don't think that's 8 degrees for every single XK engine. It is different for different engines, but the way to check it and the way to change it is pretty much the same on all of them. That's it for today's episode. Now with the ignition timing set, we're one step closer for that test drive. However, the reason I can't even drive away with it right now is that the brake master cylinder is still off the car, so I need to put that back on and bleed the brakes. But that will be coming up in the video really soon. Then the hood can go back on, and go for a test drive, and then, finally, there will be a detailed video on how to tune SU carburetors for you guys. I recently posted a question in the community tab of the channel where I asked you guys if you would be interested in seeing a live video, basically having a live hangout. Uh, there's a lot of things going on right now and many countries around the world are in lockdown so car shows are cancelled and everyone's basically hanging out at home and I thought that well maybe we could have like a virtual hangout here in the workshop. I could, it could be about whatever you guys want. We could have a look at the car, we could uh, talk about your projects, we could look at different projects here, we could have a look at the workshop. But just it can be basically anything and I think it'd be really fun. So please head on over to the community tab and you'll find it on my YouTube page and there you can vote if you want to see one of those videos, a live video or not. Um, once everything is voted and if you guys vote more yes than no, I will put out a second question where we'll see what day would work best and what time zone would work best for you guys. But now it's just a question of yes or no. So if you haven't voted already, please head on over and vote. And that's all for this video. If you liked it, please hit that like button, share it with your friends, leave a comment down below what you thought about it, and until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Loom with a Classic. I'll see you soon.